Haha, <laughs> I know how to get your attention. Hello there, challengees, and welcome to the Always Better Challenge Show. The show designed to help you take steps today that lead to a better and happier tomorrow. I'm your humble host, Joe Bedford. My most popular episode of this show by far is the review I did of Quicken 2018, but it was 30 minutes. It occurred to me that a shorter, more concise version of that show would probably be even more popular. So this is that show where I tell you exactly what I do and don't like about Quicken 2018. There will be more shows to come on the topic of Quicken due to the popularity of that episode. Now, the real Cliff Notes version of my experience with Quicken 2018 is this. It's a love-hate relationship. It looks like it is the best product out there if you're looking for a comprehensive solution for your personal financial management. So I do continue to use it. Although if someone out there knows of a program that's better, that they think is better, I would love to hear about it. I would love to give it a try. Um, it may also be the best choice for managing business and rental property income, QuickBooks by the same company being the obvious alternate choice. But Quicken 2018, which I have been using for another month now since my previous episode, does have some great features. I have discovered some workarounds for some of the things that originally annoyed me about the program. But I do continue to be very frustrated by the product as well, if I'm being honest. It just doesn't seem to be as good as I think it could be or arguably should be. There are tons of little annoyances that seem like they should have been addressed by now. So let's talk about those first. One that I didn't even cover in my earlier show, not so much an annoyance, but just a feature thing or, a, or, a, or a, the way they've set it up. Quicken 2018 is a subscription model now. So unlike previous versions of Quicken where you paid one time and then you owned the software outright, that's not, not how it is now. Now what you are purchasing is a one year subscription to the product, which does have to be renewed in a year if you want to continue using the product. Now I guess the price isn't bad for what the program does, and you do always have the most up-to-date version this way, but obviously a one-time purchase would mean less money out of my pocket. We can only hope that they're going to use the extra revenue to make some long overdue improvements to the program. Time will tell on that regard, I guess. As far as other annoyances, I guess I've gotten used to some of these as I've continued to use the program, as I said previously. And certainly none of these are necessarily new to the 2018 version. But I've definitely hit some roadblocks. As mentioned in the previous show, the initial account setup did not happen as promised. It did require assistance from Quicken support, which I got over the telephone. I will say that the support was good, but I did have to go that, through that extra step to get the program up and running. I just recently decided to move forward using Quicken's bill pay feature as well. And again, that has not gone smoothly either and is going to require additional support, which I'm in the process of getting as we speak. So what else? Um, as far as annoyances, I'm still annoyed that the debt reduction planner would not allow me to enter my actual car payment, saying that it was out of range. And this is a known issue. It was reported to Quicken years ago but it's not still not been fixed. Yet another complaint has arisen as I've started to more fully utilize the investing features. I made a couple of errors while updating my historical cost basis and found the program very unforgiving. It was very difficult to go back and correct those errors, which seems to me like it should be pretty straightforward. Another annoyance continues to be the mobile app. Though I have found it to be more useful, I'll admit, than I originally thought once I've gotten a little more familiar with it. It does not allow you to access any of the budgeting features, though it does promise that those are going to be added back in soon, whenever soon is. So I guess these are my major complaints. So let's move on now to what I do love about the program. Well, as I mentioned previously, the attachments feature, and again, this is not new to the 2018 version, but this is my favorite feature. It is great to be able to attach receipt images directly to the transactions that they're for. 
One could also use this to attach warranty information and probably some other things that I haven't even thought of. So that's really cool. I'm also loving the memo feature. Again, not new to 2018, but for me personally, it's definitely a big improvement over the program that I was using previously, which is Mint. I've also explored the budgeting features recently. They do seem to be very robust and they are working well for me so far. And once I got the investment features set up correctly, I am now loving the detail that I can dig into there. Uh, Morningstar's portfolio x-ray feature, which I believe is a paid feature, a feature that you have to pay for, it is included free with the version of Quicken that I have. And so that was a very pleasant surprise. So to sum up, I am more committed to the Quicken program now than I was a month ago as I've continued to use it and I'm continuing to find more uses for it and more ways that it can benefit me. As I said previously, I do plan to do more shows in the future about Quicken. These will probably be to tutorials on specific tasks within the software as I continue to explore and learn more myself. I've committed myself to becoming an expert on this program. I've decided to do that, both for the benefit of you, my audience, and for my own benefit as a user. Besides, if I'm going to gripe about the program, the least I can do is make sure I know everything about it there is to know and make sure I'm using it correctly myself. So that's it. I sincerely hope that you have found today's show to be helpful. If you have ideas for future shows on this topic, please let me know. By the way, future shows on Quicken will probably not be presented as episodes of the Always Better Challenge show. Though I'm obviously exploring some different ideas with my shows, I feel like I now need to break these out into their own things. I want the Always Better Challenge show to be more focused on its core mission, which is to motivate, inspire, and educate. So I'll continue to do that on those shows and some of these other ideas I have. I'm going to try to break off uh, a little branch there. So that's it for today's show, today's episode of the Always Better Challenge show. Thank you as always so much for watching. If you found today's show useful, please consider subscribing to the show if you've not done so already. Please give me a like, please give me a comment. Also, you can sign up for free email updates, free motivational emails at our website, which is abetterchallenge.com. And by the way, if you're listening to the podcast version of the show, please consider rating and reviewing the show in your podcast aggregator of choice. So that's it. Thanks as always for watching. Until next time, I'm your humble host, Joe Bedford, reminding you to go out there and make it happen.